So a while ago, I made a video about color management with a black magic camera pocket 4K, cinema camera pocket 4K, whatever you want to call it. And I actually gave some incorrect advice. So I thought today I would go through and we would fix that up. G'day, welcome back. Now the advice makes sense if you're not doing raw footage, but if you're doing raw footage, then you need to do your color management a different way when it comes to working notes. We'll go through it to date. First of all, let's look at our project settings. So in my color management settings here, I have my color science DaVinci White RGB. Timeline color space, I wanna be working in DaVinci White Intermediate, DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate. Output color space, Rec. 79, Gamma 2.4, and my 3D lookup table interpolation is tetrahedral. This is all great, but there's one thing that I didn't talk about, and that is when you use raw footage or raw footage, Resolve itself actually debays your footage for you so you don't actually have to use an IDT. So if we were to put a color space transform on this node here, our first one, and then a color space transform on the last one here, or an ODT, we're basically putting a double transform on our first one. So we don't wanna do that, otherwise we're gonna get some really crushed shadows. So what we do is, first of all, we'll do our ODT here. So we'll come down to our color management, which is under our effects up here we'll put that on now our input color space we want to be in davinci y gamut because that's what we're going to be working in input gamma davinci intermediate output color space we're going to be in rec 709 output gamma gamma 2.4 and then our tone mapping method we want to be in luminance use custom max input and get bad boy right up and use custom x output gamma mapping method saturation compression so this is all stuff we've talked about many, many times before. I did miss one thing and I do apologize for that. I don't ever want to give bad advice or incorrect advice because I know I've been given bad advice in the past as a colorist and it really set me on the wrong track. So I want to try and give clear and precise, correct advice. That was a weird thing to say. So we don't need to do an IDT on our first node here or color space transform. What we need to do though, if we want to work in a DaVinci wide gamut, we want to come down to our project settings here. Then we're going to go down to camera raw. Now this is where we're going to change it. So in our raw profile, we're going to go to our black magic raw section here. Now it doesn't matter if you come down to your black magic raw and you change things around and then you go back to Ari and change things around because resolve is still going to save all those changes you just did. So even if I went to black magic raw, and I changed this to, let's say, um, this one here for whatever reason, and then we're back to Ari, and then we're back to like Magic Raw. As you can see, our color space is still this DCI E3 D65. So we'll go back to the other one that we're at, DaVinci Wide Gamut. Now, if you only just started Resolve, and you, let's say you've loaded it up, this is probably not gonna be your project settings. In fact, it's most likely going to be Black Magic Design, and Gamma is gonna be in Black, Ma Black Magic Design Film. So you're working in their color space. You're not actually working in that Da Vinci wide gamut color space. But if I were to save this now, our image has actually changed a fair bit. We're no longer working in that Black Magic color space. Well, sorry, that Da Vinci wide gamut color space. Now, because our node, our output device settings are set to Da Vinci wide gamut, we actually want to match this in our settings. So we come down to settings once again in our color science. Now, if you can't change it, all you got to do is come up to decode using and go to project here. Now, in our color space, we want to change this to Da Vinci wide gamut. Now, in our gamma, we want to come down to Da Vinci intermediate. Now, you can put highlight recovery on if you'd like, if you're having some problems with your highlights. I generally leave it off and I usually do it when I'm working in my nodes. So we're gonna leave that off and we're not gonna put apply LUT on or anything else like that. We're just gonna leave this as is. White balance, you can leave this as shot because that's the way the DP intended you to look at this footage. If they wanted to be something else, then maybe they would tell you to change it to, let's say, daylight, cloudy, shade, etc., etc. But I always just leave it on as shot, it's a lot easier. So we've done all these settings here. Now we're gonna go down to save. Now we're working in that DaVinci wide gamut color space. So we're no longer working in that black magic design color space. So this is the raw footage. So that's all good. So hopefully you understood that. If you haven't, please leave a comment below and we can go through it further. Let's say you're not working in a raw footage. Let's say you're working in like a ProRes or some other flavor of ProRes or some other flavor that isn't raw. This is 
ProRes. So this was shot in ProRes. So what happens here is when you're shooting in ProRes, basically you're baking in that Blackmagic Design color space. But we don't want to work in that color space. We want to work in that DaVinci White Gamut color space. Well, I do anyway, maybe you don't. But all my LUTs have been built to work in that DaVinci White color space. So if I were to change my color space now, all the LUTs that I've designed aren't going to work properly. What we want to do here, we actually want to do a color space transform. Now, again, you wouldn't do this if your footage is raw, but because this footage is ProRes 422, we're going to do it. So input color space, we want to go to black magic. Now this is 6K footage. So I'm going to go down to, let's say DaVinci wide gamut 45 or gen 45 input gamma. And I'm going to go to black magic design pocket 6K film gen four. Now, Footage looks really bad so far, but that is okay. I'm gonna turn this to none. Output color space, we wanna be in DaVinci wide gamut. And output gamma DaVinci intermediate. Now our footage is sitting in that proper color space. So that's off and that's on. So now we're working in a better color space, a wider color space than we were before. Before we're working in that black magic design color space, but now we're working in that wide gamut color space. So if I were to put a LUT on now, now we can see that this LUT is working properly because it's been designed to work in that color space. So everything is working the way it should be working. So that's really good. Now it's the same for this footage here, but this footage isn't shot on the Blackmagic 6K. It's actually shot on a Pocket 4K but again, it's not raw, so we need to make those changes. So I'm just gonna copy this node across here by pressing the middle mouse button. And I'll just turn the slide off. Then in our footage here, instead of my input camera being Blackmagic Design Pocket 6K Gen 4, I'm gonna go to Blackmagic Design Pocket 4K Gen 4. Now it's a slight change, but it is the proper color space to work in. Now, I know some people like to work in Film Gen 5, but to me, it looks really crushed and I don't like the way it looks. So I'm gonna go back and change this to Pocket 4K Gen 4. Now we're working in a better color space and this is when we can put that LUT on. And maybe this light is doing a little too much so we can change it to something a little bit nicer, something like that. And again, we're getting a nice looking image here. Lots going on with just a few changes. Now, before we go, let's just have a look really quick at what would happen if I turn this input color space off and we still have this LUT on. Again, this LUT is built for our DaVinci White Gamut. So let's just turn this off. And looking at our image here, it is doing way too much in terms of that LUT. We have way too much going on. It's really a good word for this, but it's kind of out of control. We're sort of like, pushing up all these highlights too much and our image is way too saturated, way too contrasty. Turn that node back on. We're sitting in a much better place. Yes, it's a little desaturated, but that's okay. We can actually work around this problem here. So this is a much better starting point than something like that. So anyway, again, apologies for the mistake. Um, I'll delete the other video so no one else will get tripped up on it. If you have any other questions, please leave a comment below. And thank you again for watching. I've been Drew from Haiti Films and have a fantastic day.